This is Billy Halk, and I'm here with former NFL center of 11 seasons, Corey Raymer. Corey, good to see you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, when did you first get interested in football? I, well, just like any other kid, um, I think just throwing out in the backyard, you know, always with the neighborhood kids doing that. Um, played a lot of it, um, you know, at the elementary school levels. Flag football, of course, was where everybody started. But, um, I mean, that's... I grew up in Wisconsin, and the Packers were always, uh, they were never good, but they were always watched on Sundays, and we always had to, I, we were all tried to be Lynn Dickies and Eddie Lee Ivories and, you know, so on and so forth, and yeah, it was, uh, you know, that was, that's where it starts with everybody, is being a kid and playing in the backyard when, uh, you know, it was, that, that's really what the whole game means. Uh, you were a second-round pick. At the University of Wisconsin. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the journey from college to the pros. <laughs> well, I always said, from high school to college, it was, it was always big. The step was big enough to where you'd maybe want to, you know, you need a ladder. But from college to the pros, you would need an elevator. It was, uh, it, it's, you know, you're going against. Uh, they're grown men. Not only are they grown men, but they, you know, they've they've been here for years doing it. The speed of the game, and we've all heard everybody talk about the speed of the game but it, it's uh, it's amazing they're true professionals you know coming in as a rookie um you know that that whole process i mean you just coming from basically at the, you know your senior year as a senior in college everything's great every you know you're you're well known in the area you feel comfortable with it and then wham you're completely thrown into the combine you're thrown into the nfl draft and after that point, you thrown in right into the football, into your team. And it's something that you, like no other, you can't really, uh, you know, nobody, you can't really explain it or experience it until you do it. But it's just, uh, you know, walking into that, it, uh, the, into a professional locker room as opposed to a college or high school or whatever the case. It's still football. There's no question about it. But it's just, uh, it's a little, it's. It's it's such a big step. Like I said, you you take an elevator. This is, they're grown men. They're stronger, faster. Um, the speed of the game is just amazing. And uh, a lot of the stuff that was, you know, the biggest thing was the knowledge that had to go behind it. It wasn't just like we were talking about earlier, just throwing in the in the sand lot in the backyards. It's not that anymore. You got numbers. You got names. You got responsibilities. Uh, new ones each week, and it's uh, you know it's you got to really you know, bear down and, you know, just as much time as you spend on the field, you got to spend probably two or three times as much off the field. So it's, uh, you become a student of the game. It, it teaches you everything. I mean, it did, uh, you know, every level kind of teaches you a little bit more, but once you get into the pros, it's, you know, these, these guys are, they're all, they're all pros and they're all the best. So it's, uh, it's fun and a lot of ways and it's also the toughest thing ever in most in, in every way as well so but it, the, the the progress from one to the other it uh it takes a while and it's such like i said i keep saying it's it that one's big enough where i would consider taking an elevator it's not one step or two it's it's a story or, or three so it's uh it was interesting eye-opening experience and it's one of those things that basically you either you figure it out or or, or you get out, or you get thrown out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, fortunately enough, uh, we get to figure it out, and it's uh, it's a heck of a ride. So what was, what was going through your mind when you found out that you're a second-round pick, you know, you're heading to the Redskins? I mean, how can, can you even describe that feeling? What went through your mind? Well, I, the biggest thing was I was just glad it was over. I, <laughs> that From the combine to dealing with everybody, it, where you're going to go, how you're going to go, where you you're placed in here, all the analysts and this and this and, you know, it's just, it, I was just glad that I got the phone call and I was glad I, you know, I, I was born and raised in Wisconsin, never left and moved out to Virginia. And I remember getting off the plane at Dulles airport, looking around going, this kind of reminds me of home. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, uh, it really had that feeling. I loved it. It was a football town. It was football, everything. And, um, uh, excuse me it reminded me of just being home so it, that experience i'm glad it was over i'm glad it was done with you know it, that just getting here was a journey in itself and getting here and 
getting the cobwebs off or getting the butterflies out all the time and you just experiencing getting you know fitting in doing what you're doing getting on a routine getting back to as soon as you can get back to okay this is just a football this is a game it's back to football and get rid of all the other stuff that comes along with it it was uh it was an enjoyment to like i said just to finally get that phone call know where i was going get out here and you know fit in and you know get back to playing the basics of playing football so what were some of the uh hardest lessons you learned as a player i remember the first lesson i learned in training camp um it really you you, you always go to the whistle and but even in practice you go to the whistle I, there was a defensive lineman that I was running down the field, wide receiver caught the ball, and I was just kind of jogging. <laughs> and I was close enough to where this defensive lineman came in and cleaned my clock. I mean, the first thing that hit the ground was the top of my head. <laughs> and I didn't know where I was. I didn't know left from right, up from down. And he just, he looked at me and he goes, you know, I, I got taught the same lesson. At, later at lunch, he told me, he goes, I got taught that same lesson and I just got to pass it on to you. And I... Of course, didn't say thank you, but I said a few other choice words. But you know, I, I, you know, it's it's one of those things. I've in real life, on and off the field, I have to learn the hard way, at least two or three times, sometimes eight, ten, twelve, <laughs> you know, fifty times. But um, the, the lessons that you learn in playing football, especially in this league, is you, you learn them once, and you you really. You know that those uh, they stick with you because they're, they're they're big ones and you know it, it's it, it's the difference. It's not uh, especially the older you get, um, it's the experience. I mean you can't you know a, a ten year vet can't keep up with the uh, rookies or two or th second year or third year or fourth year guy. But the thing is we've been there. Those guys have been there for ten years and know a little of the the tricks of, uh, that these guys don't. So it's all it's all about experience. Uh, getting it, uh, you know, it, the power is knowledge, and or knowledge is power, and you just the, the experience of doing it is uh, something that it, it's every every practice, every every game, every week, every month, you're learning something new, something different, and every time you get it underneath your belt, another game, another game, another game, or another practice, anything against these guys, you just start picking up things on your own. You you figure out how to do things right, and um, try not to do them wrong and just it, it's like I said it's you, you get back into the philosophy or the the feel of just playing football but then you actually start being a student of the game and start you know watching film well you know it, during a, a football game the film is you know film never lies and it's there you can sit there and watch it and watch it and watch it and then you get out into the field and it's in real you know it's, it's right in front of you so you start picking up on little leans or you know, calls or anything, anything you can do, you're, you're just not breaking the huddle or running up to the football and laughing and joking, snapping and doing this. You start paying, you start paying real close attention because those lessons that you learned in previous matches, it, it all adds up and it all helps you in the long run. So how did you know when it was time to retire from the NFL? Well, they, uh, they told me. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have to know. I mean, it was one of those things you're fired type things that, uh, they let you know, but yeah, it's a it's a sport that I remember. Russ Grimm, he was uh, when I got there, he was a coach, and he came to be an O line coach a few years later, and he was one of the, the he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, experience that I've had in the pros as a coaching experience and everything. Great guy, uh, wonderful, you know, Hall of Famer. But um, he when when I was a rookie, I remember him saying, he goes when. You know, you, you wake up after a game, you got bumps and bruises. You know, after, you know, say it's a Sunday game, Monday you wake up and you're sore. Well, Tuesday you wake up and you're like, okay, back to normal. And that's the first couple of years. Well, then, you know, they, they, a few more years go by and you get to Tuesday. And, oh, yeah, that's still kind of there. But Wednesday you wake up and it's still good. And then a few more years go by and it's, you know, you wake up Wednesday and they're still there. Thursday, okay, now you're good. Well, when you're still ailing from last week, <laughs> the last week game or the two weeks before game on the following Sunday that it's, you know, you start, you start adding time and you start, you know, father times uh, knocking on the door and the, the light at that tunnel is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. But it was, you know, like I said, that, yeah, there's very few times that everybody has that 
you know, wants to go out on their own terms. And unfortunately, quite a few people, you know, don't or can't. And the, for those that it can, it's awesome. I mean, like, you know, Brett Favre career or whatnot, uh, you know, that's just the greatest experience. They're going out on top, winning a Super Bowl and calling it quits after that. You know, that's the ideal thing. But it's um, it's a sport you never want to give up. And, you know, you like we started, you played it your whole life and you just don't want it to end. And, you know, everything else, money, everything else is great. But sooner or later, you, you can get that call. And it's uh, it wasn't necessarily my decision, but you knew – you always knew after that that it was it was coming sooner or later, and um, you know it always comes too soon. So, tell me about some of your biggest accomplishments as a player. Um, as far as well accomplishments, I don't. I, I mean, you can, I can go down the list of you know everything that I achieved in in college and you know do, doing the things in in making it to the pros and everything like that the, my greatest accomplishment I think is the fact that to be honored to be drafted into the pros you know the, you get that anything that is um yeah I mean I, you you fight for you house you, you do everything you can do you know obviously you go to high school and you're playing football and it's to go you want to go to college and you get a scholarship and then Okay, you get to college and you get a scholarship and you're fighting for that. And then the next step, ultimately, everything you're doing is, okay, we got to get to the pros. And you got there and you did that. And other people recognize what you do in that. I I just think that's an accomplishment in itself. Um, I, I've, anything that other players vote on, you know, coaches or people or any that are around there, around you constantly, um, like I said, football players, your other teammates, your other coaches, anything that they vote on, um, you know that that it's their decision that you achieved this goal or you you got this award that they voted on. And one of the one that I was talking about was a wall. It's uh, you coming back from uh, um, it's a courage award, Ed Block Courage Award, and it's just one that you come off of injuries and then you come back the next year, and the the, the players wrote you know they uh, they vote on that. And that was, I, I, in 2000, 2000, I think it was, I blew my knee out. And in 2001, I was lucky enough to, to get that award. And that was always something that's very special to me, just because it's from other players. They get, you know, they're, oh, those are the guys that get to see you try to fight back. And, you know, everything that you're doing in the training room, in the weight room, you know, trying to get back on the field with them and, you know, uh, fight the fights that they're doing. You know that you you know, you missed a year prior. It was uh, that was something that was pretty special to me. But as far as just getting there, walking out every Sunday and smelling the air and the fresh cut grass and the, the fans screaming and yelling to me, I mean that was accomplishment. And be able to play uh, 11 years in the league, it was it, it's it's an honor. It was an accomplishment to get there. And you know I, I you know they the NFL didn't own me own me or yeah I didn't deserve it, but. I owe them everything that I, you know, everything that I have, just because it's, uh, it was, it was beyond anything that you can, I can sum up in words, and you know, in an interview or on a piece of paper or anything like that. I, I get to play in the stadiums and you know, play against the teams and see the people, the fans, everything. It's it, the experience in itself was an accomplishment that um, you know I'll never forget. Now, speaking of injuries, you were in a bad car wreck years ago. <laughs> How did that happen, and did it affect your career at all? I, you know what, it, it uh, we were coming back. It was our my bye week, our bar, our bye week. We we're just coming off of it, and the stripers were running, and I was new to this area, and I guess everybody, yeah, I was a big, I'm still I'm a big outdoorsman, hunting and fishing, and etc. And I got into a group of buddies that, well, you got to go striper fishing, you got to go striper fishing, and I'm like, okay, let's go striper fishing. So they, we set it up for that Monday right after our bye week was over. The Sunday was our bye week, and Monday we went fishing. And Tuesday morning, Monday and Tuesday we went fishing. I was coming back Tuesday afternoon because we had practice on Wednesday, and I just was driving home. And unfortunately, like how quickly everything goes wrong and how it can go wrong, and um, I just I was on the highway, and uh, an older gentleman pulled out in front of me, didn't see me coming, pulled out in front of me, and we, you know, ended up, 
in a pretty serious car wreck and I, it was me myself and three other guys in there um thankfully that you know none of us none, none of them died or anything like that it was a couple scratches and broken bones and stitches here and there and um some you know it was a, a long road to recovery but the the biggest thing that came out of that was i flew out of the car and i kind of looked back at earth because gravity was <laughs> gravity was playing its role and i was coming back and i kind of turned around and the, I, I couldn't have landed any better because I landed right on my ass. And which was the most padding that I, my belly or my ass, one of the two would have had to been the most perfect spots because they had the most padding and everything. But when landing there, I broke my tailbone. And I'm here to tell you, I would, I would break every bone in my body before I break my tailbone again because it never really affected it. Besides the fact that I missed the last handful of games, my second, I think it was the second year in the season. And I had to come back from that again. I had a bad shoulder and um, some other things here and there. But that literally was the biggest pain in the butt that I've ever had in my entire life. And I'd never experienced it, but even still to this day, 15 years later or something like that, you still can't sit for long periods of time. And just stupid stuff like that. And that's all, as far as everything mended, everything you know grew back together as normal as it could. But, uh, yeah, I was just thankful that myself and as well as anybody else, including the, the older gentleman that pulled out in front of me, nobody was seriously, seriously hurt. You know, at the time, it was, it was pretty messed up. And yeah, the other thing is we had to go striper fishing. We had to go striper fishing. It was the greatest eating fish there on the planet. Well, I had four or five huge coolers full of nothing but striper fillets, and the only people who got to benefit that was from the ra raccoons because all, those, all that – the fish went flying into the woods so it was uh it, it was fun while it lasted but it came to an abrupt ending with that and yeah again i'm just it was thankful that nobody got terribly seriously injured like that and um and nothing that none of us can't uh you know nothing that didn't grow back together and uh it doesn't affect us it didn't affect us during the football after playing football and it, it, in the long run the only in the you know, like I said, the only thing that hurts now is every once in a while I still get that pain in the butt. <laughs> and that's from landing on it. <laughs> well, um, based on your experience, what advice would you give to young athletes trying to make it into professional sports? Well, um, my biggest thing is I, I stand in front of people still today saying if I can do it, anybody can do it. But where it starts right now is, I, and this was, you know, it's been years. I mean, now everybody is, the crave is, you know, it, everybody's bigger, everybody's faster, everybody's stronger. I don't know where they're going to go from here, but I'm telling you every year, it's just, it does, it gets bigger, it gets faster, it gets stronger, and it does things. And it's, it. if I gave anybody suggestions, um, you know, I had my experience, you know, I got lucky enough to just play football, uh, lucky enough to come from a small town where, you know, someone, the University of Wisconsin was, was always much like the Packers back in the day were very bad. We had a new coach, Barry Alvarez came in and he, his number one commitment was to stop, you know, let the, the, the in-state recruits are coming to Madison. They didn't, he didn't want to lose them to anybody else. And I was one of those. And I was his first couple of years. And I was, I think just the timing, I was very fortunate enough to be offered a scholarship and everything obviously worked out from there but I it again it I think everything starts with school um, I was never a scholar and never <laughs> never will be a scholar but it, I it, you know without it you, you go nowhere I mean it's it is a piece of paper um, how much it means you know, it, it's it, it's unbelievable I mean you, you got to start with school you got to stay in school and you got to be good at school it's much like practice. Hey, it's something you do every day. It's like work. It sucks sometimes. You got to find a way to make it fun and enjoyable. And it's it's going to repeatedly be there. And it's repeatedly going to kick you in the butt at time and time again. It, there's, it's just That's just the way it is. And it's not just school. It's life in general. But with that, it starts as a high school student. You got to, it starts with school. You got to be, you got to do your, you got to do what you're supposed to do. And that's the easy part. I mean, it's you go to school, you stay out of trouble, you do what you, what you're supposed to do, what normal 
you know human beings are supposed to do and you know it, it, it it's a tough road especially now because everybody's just it, everybody's bigger faster stronger um you know working out nutrients stuff like that everything it it it, it all comes into play um but uh, you know i if i can do it anybody can do it like i said and it, it does start with school you got to stay in school you got to do what you're supposed to do you know and, and and that's what it is and hopefully if from high school to college, you get a scholarship, or you, you even get into college. Um, if you don't go to the next step, heck, you got a, a college degree. You know, if you're fortunate enough to get a scholarship, you know, you might not, it might not work out, but you got to toughen it. You know, you got to, you got to make it. You got to go through it. And a college degree is worth his weight in gold. I mean, it's a piece of paper, but without that piece of paper, you're, you know, you're, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. But like again. From start to finish, it starts with school. You got to stick with it. You got to do that, and you know it, the the rest of it take care of itself. I mean, it's just uh, like I said, from the start to the finish, it was it's playing football. I mean, everybody can play football. It's the stuff that you're supposed to do in school that you know keeps you there. Yeah, don't give them a reason to throw you out because there's always someone right behind you, ready to take your place and be you. So don't let that happen. Don't let that, don't be that person. Just show up, shut up, do what you're supposed to do, and it starts with school, and then the rest you get to go play football or any other sport that you're doing. And that's very true. A lot of young athletes they don't realize that grades are to at least half the battle. It it's so if it, it's more than, you know it's even more than half right now. I mean everybody will help you do what you can do, but it's at the end of the day. I mean this is what you're expected. As a high school student, as a college student, and even though you get into the pros, it's you, you're not graded on. Uh, you, you don't go to school, but you are studying just as much as you did previously, and that that's a whole that's a whole other diploma that you you receive. But it's uh, it's that's where it starts. That's the that's the bread and butter. That's where it starts and ends. And at the end of the day, you need the you need the grades. Period. So. Based on this upcoming season, what are your expectations for the Redskins? I, I always, you know, when I'm, I, it's, it's, it's been a long road to toe here, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's such a great, great town, a football town, and it's just, it, it's a great game. The fans deserve what, at, at any point, what they're going to get. You know, I the two years ago, I think we got spoiled with, um, you know, RG coming in and just lighting it up and doing great, and it was great to see, and it's a lot of fun, and everybody, it's it's fun because you look on TV and you see the smiles on the players' faces, and it, it, I mean, it 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 kind of gives you, uh, you know, a, a little hip in your hop, you know, it, it, it sparkle too, because you you know how how much hard work that these guys are doing, you know, I've I've lived it and I've done it, and I know how these guys are doing it. And to see them smile because they're winning, it's a storybook season, Cinderella season, whatever you want to call it. But they had a great year, and then this past year, kind of, they they stumbled here a little bit here and there. But with a new coach, with a couple new, you know, players here and there, I think they're on the right track. I don't want to say they're still rebuilding; they're a few years away. But I think, um, I you know, I'm, I'll be I'm a fan now, so I. I sit there just like with everybody else. I do that with my kids, and they love the Redskins. And I, the, the, the people around here are just too important to me. You know, not the the, the blood, the blood, sweat, and tears. You know, the, that that they sweat, that they want the Redskins to do good. I'm still one of them, and I love every second of it. I would, you know, it, it reminds me. Of, it still reminds me of home. You know, Wisconsin's the same way. Uh, out here's the same way. It's it's. It's a town that you know. I got. To, I went away to San Diego for a few years, and then I came back. And San Diego, you know, you got the beach. You got 75 degrees. You know, it's not a football town. This and much like a few other places, it's their football towns. Their fans are fanatic. They're great, and you know, sooner or later, it will happen. I, it's always. I'm always rooting. I'm always cheering, and I, you know, I. I always hope, wish them the best of luck, just because it's. You know, I know what they're doing, but it's always. It's, it's sooner or later it will happen. I don't know. I'm hoping sooner than later, you know, not only for, you know, the, the players deserve it, but I think more importantly, I think the fans and the town and the area 
I think they deserve it probably more than any of us just because that's they've been waiting so long and it's uh, it, it's been tough and it's uh, it's getting there I think uh, I think you know in my opinion I think they're they're gonna do well and but unfortunately it's it's tough to say now just because everybody's doing well it's a tough you know they always anybody can beat anybody on any given Sunday and it's the truth but now you know it's just uh, it's amazing I mean the NFL is a, a, a truly unbelievable uh, league that you know, changes you so just, quickly. It changes. You have no idea what's going on, and it's it's tough to pick. But uh, it's it's all kind of that thing. The football gods. You know, hopefully we get the a couple fumbles to bounce our way, and a couple interceptions here and there, and that's all that matters. You know, a couple kicks here and there, and you know those are the those are the big ones. You need you need to win the games that you that you should win, and hopefully luck out in a few other ones, and you never know. You just keep rolling. So your message to the fans is. Be a little more patient. Well, for a little bit longer. <laughs> I won't go that far because I don't think they can be any more patient than what they are. But uh, you know what? The, the good thing, they, 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 they understand it. They hate it, and I don't like to see. I don't like anybody to boo, but they do boo at the right times and when they should boo. But they're also very excited when they need to be. They're very, you know, they, they just again with the the. the the off-season transactions that we've had, you know, everybody that now all of a sudden the fire's back lit, and here we are. You know, I listen to the junkies. I listen to, you know, one Elliot in the morning and all the everybody. Oh, we're going back. We're we're going to win the division. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You know, winning the Super Bowl. And hey, yeah, I hope that's the case. But it's it it doesn't take much to get the, these guys in this area back on the bandwagon and back on your and and you know riding your coattails and that's they deserve it and I, you know I, I hope nothing for the bets for the organization for the players and more importantly the fans well, that's good to hear yeah all right Corey Appreciate thank you for your time you bet anytime Appreciate it. thank you